Sam. Um, yeah, just on the 1701 point, but the, so you're calling for, you're, you're now, I think in the last sort of two weeks, you've, you've started using 1701 uh, talk, as, a, as a sort of re repeated talking point, but in the actual three week ceasefire that you were proposing two weeks ago, uh, that was a, sort of a temporary ceasefire that would hopefully lead to a, a resolution, but no longer do you want uh, an immediate cessation of, of violence to move to a diplomatic we do want we do want to ultimately get to a ceasefire as i said we ultimately want to get to a diplomatic uh, resolution the situation on the ground has changed from where we are two weeks ago and we hope that this change in situation on the ground will change hezbollah's calculation ultimately because even when um we were putting forward that ceasefire proposal and trying to get to the full implementation of 1701 uh, I can tell you there were a lot of people, and you see, you see people publicly commenting on this, quite skeptical of whether Hezbollah, even at the end of a 21-day ceasefire, was going to fully agree to go back to the Latani River, given the fact that they have refused to do that for the past 18 years. Maybe their calculation will be different in the days and weeks ahead. That's the proposition that will be tested. Right, but now uh, there's, a, there, there, there's a ground incursion, so the Israelis are also in breach of... of what would need to happen to, to be in that? So, are they willing to to, to move back over the border if in the, in the in the event of a temporary cessation of, of fighting, not necessarily going all the way to the the terms of 1701, but what you were calling for before? It seems that you're so you're no longer calling for that. Right? So the Israeli government will have to speak to what they will and uh, are not willing to do. But to be clear, when we say that we want to see 1701 implemented, that includes all the provisions of 1701. It doesn't just mean the provisions that apply to Hezbollah. It means Israel withdrawing south of the blue line as well. We want to see uh, every provision implemented, and that include that includes the provisions, as I just said, for Israel. And yesterday we spoke a bit about this that we're, uh, on the back of this video that. Prime Minister Netanyahu put out, where he's, you know, he's basically calling for Lebanese people to uh, to rid their country of the the scourge of Hezbollah. So you seem to be backing this campaign. That's the Prime Minister of Israel talking about these these broader aims. Uh, you you've come out in support of this campaign, but you seem to be basically supporting. The, the, an effort to change the politics of Lebanon by force. So we want the Lebanese people to decide who their leaders ought to be. Bottom line, and that has been our position that continues to be position. We don't want to see any other government in the region dictate to the people of Lebanon who their leader is. We certainly don't want to dictate to the people of Lebanon who their leader is, and we're not going to. We want the Lebanese people to be able to do it, but we want them to be able to do it absent a terrorist organization putting a gun to their head, which is the situation that Lebanon has been in for decades now. Right. And so um, uh, we are hopeful that the stalemate that has existed in Lebanese politics for some time, that for the past two years has kept them from electing a president because of Hezbollah's influence, because the way Hezbollah uses force to um, uh, make its influence known by threat inside Lebanese politics, um, we hope that the Lebanese, Lebanese political system can break that deadlock, and ultimately we hope that Hezbollah is degraded enough that they um, uh, are less of a force in Lebanese politics and that they agree to uh, withdraw back up above the Latani River so 1701 can be implemented. Right, but whether you like it or not, Hezbollah is part of the Lebanese political landscape, right? So you are, you're, you're trying, you're, what the Israelis are doing is trying to change that landscape through, through force, and you're supporting that. So this seems to be a very different approach to uh, calling for restraint, trying to get everyone on board with diplomatic uh, agreements. In the last two weeks, we've gone from that to, oh, maybe we could change the government of Lebanon through uh, a ground invasion. So we have always, always made clear that we think a terrorist organization should play no role in the government of any country, and especially a terrorist organization that has shown over decades that it is willing to use force and threaten force against the Lebanese people to accomplish its aims and to hold the people of Lebanon hostage. That is not a new position of the United States. That has been our position going back decades. It will always be our position that Hezbollah should not be able to or should not be allowed to use force against the Lebanese people to accomplish political aims. That hasn't changed. It's not going to change. And, and now, now these sort of broader aims raises a question. Um, 
you know, you are, what you've come out in support of is limited, uh, I guess, short-term incursions. You won't say uh, how short-term, but but how long can you uh, can this this operation continue with the goal of of uh, basically ridding Lebanese politics of Hezbollah? So we are in conversation with the Israeli government about uh, exactly those questions. Um, the goal that Israel is trying to accomplish is to push them back. Be you know uh, uh, away from the border. I I, I think is it's a separate. Goal, I think, what's that? But, I mean, is I that mean, the goal? They seem to have that goal and other goals. That, that is their goal. I will say it is our goal to ultimately see the Lebanese people elect a, uh, their own political representatives. When it comes to Israel's military goals, I'm not going to make any forecasts. We're going to continue to have conversations with them about it.